Well, what do we know from a lot of research and anecdotal evidence that it's not just uh, the, the playing sport that makes a difference. It's that environment, that psychological climate that coaches uh, create that make it or break it in terms of, of young players. So, I mean, we could have coaches that um, know a lot about the sport, the technique, the strategies, but if they don't create a quality environment, kids are never going to maximize their talent and we're going to lose them. So it is a real, real critical piece in the story. Well, I mean, there, there are programs out there that uh, try to have people, uh, coaches, become more aware of working with children and that children need to have fun. And there's, uh, there are some other programs from a, a psychological standpoint. But I think what, what is really at the heart of empowering coaching is that it is absolutely theoretically based. So it draws from our rich understanding of motivation, motivation processes, and it entails working with coaches so they start to understand this. Because, I mean, when you understand and you have insight, then you can use. You can use in a different type of context, and, uh, and that knowledge can be applied in, uh, more effectively. Well, uh, the talented kid, the child that maybe isn't quite as, uh, as uh, skillful in, in both cases, we want to keep them. We don't want to lose them. And we want to maximize um, the talents and, and capabilities they have. And so you, know, you have to create an environment that is sustaining, that children are not afraid of failing, that they're ready to push themselves, that they look forward to the next, next training, that they can handle the defeats and obstacles that uh, sport brings us. It's never always a rosy, rosy picture. So I think um, you know, this is the key thing that we try to do in powering coaching. The evolution of empowering coaching is not a new thing. I mean, it has evolved over 20, 25 years of research and then application and, and going and working with coaches, learning some more, bringing it back to the research. So a reciprocal type of relationship. And it has been applied to coaches of uh, all different competitive levels, all the way up to Olympic international coaches, to your, your beloved um, grassroots coach and in terms of different different sports. Within the PAPA project, we centered on football because of the, the mass participation in, in that sport and its applicability across Europe. So uh, it was fun to be able to customize it for grassroots football in the PAPA project, but the, the program has much uh, broader appeal. In a sense, that's how it all got started. That's my passion for this area of work. I've always loved sport. I've been playing sports since I, you know, I could remember. And uh, I had coaches that uh, just made me feel well about myself and my capabilities, you know, that anything was possible. And I kept uh, trying to push the envelope and train, train harder to get better. And there are other coaches that uh, kind of killed that spirit. So whenever I look at these concepts, I think back to my youth sport and my, my college level uh, athletics experience, etc. And I can see, see those coaches. And um, it always seemed to me to be a shame. Because some of the coaches uh, that maybe were disempowering, uh, you know, uh, the team we could have been winning. Uh, we, you know, we, we, they were very good technicians and strategists, etc. But uh, we never maximized what we had, and we didn't enjoy it. Even when we were winning, we weren't even happy because something was really, really missing in, in the picture.